hello I'm still doing my public speaking course and today I want to talk about a subject I know really well which is um, the environment of the Hare Krishnas and why I think involving yourself in that environment is a really bad idea for a person's mental health. Now I know this subject really well because I've been there uh, I spent about 10 years of my life being deeply immersed in uh, the Hare Krishna movement and um, spent time in different temples in Germany and in Sweden. And so I want to talk about why it's a really harmful environment for uh, an individual. Um, now I will first talk about the philosophy um, that's underpinning everything they're doing. Um, then I want to talk about how this philosophy is being implanted in a person through uh, the programs um, in the temples. And then I want to talk about what I think this philosophy does to a person's mental health. And then I will talk a little bit about the importance of once you've removed yourself physically from the environment, of working really, really hard and being aware of the need to work really, really hard on removing that structure from... Uh, from your thinking because that's much more difficult than removing yourself uh, physically. Now philosophy, uh, philosophy is uh, basic Hindu philosophy is um, very very much based on the idea that this material world is an illusion and we are uh, the spirit soul. Now it goes very much into detail, it goes very much into saying that we are um, in our natural state, we are servants of God and we just want to love God and be part of God, a tiny tiny part but part of God and we don't have any other desires than to serve and love God in our natural state and the reason that this material world exists um, is that we have at some point had the desire to enjoy independently from God and to have any kind of control and um, so this material world exists we are dealing with the material world through layers of um, contamination uh, what's closest to our real being as the soul is the false ego and the false ego tells us that we are this material thing and the false ego um, but the next layer down is the intelligence and then there's the mind and the mind works with the world through the senses and the senses are both the, the uh, taste and touch and sight the things that we experience the world with, but also um, the sense we interact with the world. So, um, we in this state, being in this material world, we are not having any experience of our real soul. We have no, um, we are so covered and so much an illusion because life after life we have lived in this world um, that we have no idea what we really want. Um, um, and so the ne logical next step is, okay, we need to remove some contamination so we can have some glimpse of our real state of being love, being just love God. And so, because we don't have any experience of what we really want, the logical next step is, okay, so where do we go to find out 
about what we really want. Now what the Hare Krishnas will tell you, you need to surrender. You need to surrender all of your ind independent thought and you need to find um, association of devotees. You need to surrender to the program that the Guru has given um, for your um, purification and you need to do this with all your heart, not hold anything back. Now then, this is the basic philosophy. The next step, okay, you want to find out, okay, devotees, where's the nearest temple? You will then be told that whenever you spend more time in the temple, you will be told you need to do more. And so you need to spend more time with devotees. And doing anything else means that you're a demon because you're holding back. And also you're, you're bad because you're not doing what your soul really wants. So you see where this is going already. It's very black and white. <laughs> the most black and white thing you could imagine. And so if you listen to them, you will then um, start chanting regularly, which, is, which means um, like a rosary. You have... Um, what, um, a bead, a set of beads, 108 beads, and you would chant the mantra that consists of three words. So one round means 108 repetitions of the mantra. And they would tell you, okay, you need to start doing that. And you need to only eat food that's um, been uh, offered to Krishna and obviously purely vegetarian and everything. Um, and you need to spend more time with devotees and you need to stop associating with non-devotees because that's very, very, very bad. And so logical next step is that you join the temple if you really want to surrender. Okay, so now you've surrendered. Um, well, unless you keep it with your parents or something, but you know, you're not surrendered unless you've surrendered all your material possessions. Of course, that's the first step. You know, sort of, you know, so obviously you're gonna surrender all your material possessions, um, and then you have to surrender all your mind and all of these things. And the way that you do that, now we're coming to the temple program structure. Um, so you get up at four o'clock in the morning because sleep obviously is ignorance, very bad. Um, if the first temple program starts at four fifteen. You've had a shower. Um, and you go to the temple program, there's the um, communal singing, there's prayers, um, there's different things that you walk around to clear your karma. And um, so that's 45 minutes. After those 45 minutes from 5 to 7 o'clock is Japa time, which means you chant 16 rounds, which is the daily minimum of these 108 mantras. So that's the way that looks. It's 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 audible. So you chant it loudly, not too loud because it's personal. So you don't chant, and you you are in a room with other people uh, who are also chanting, but it's it's personal. So you don't. It's yeah, it's a very strange environment, <laughs> and it's also very it's it softens you you up like anything. Um, like if you told anybody you, you're repeating the same three words for two hours, they would probably have um, concerns. Then the next thing is that at seven o'clock there's the next part of the communal program, um, which is more singing, more prayers, a uh, bit of dancing in front of the altar and looking at Krishna on the altar. And then there's a lecture about 45 minutes about this philosophy. And then at about nine o'clock there's breakfast. Now by nine o'clock you've already spent five hours in the program that's basically more immersive than anything. Now, and then you go ahead and spend your day doing your service and this environment is very hierarchical. So you have a temple president, you have department heads. Uh, so you will be in a strict, sort of you will be told what to do. Um, and so there's always strict controls and. Um, no spacing out at all. Spacing out is another word from, from their lingo. Um, so, 
yeah, by then there's lunch, then uh, sort of there's another piece of program in the evening, which is more communal chanting, and um, and then by nine o'clock you're you're falling into your sleeping bag. Because obviously you don't have bed. My God, that's such an illusion. You know, you roll up your mat on the floor. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, much of this stuff won't actually. Be happening these days because hardly ever joins a proper hardly anybody joins a proper temple but on the other hand everybody will have gone and spent a week or at least like a retreat um, which works you know even a week will soften you up so much that you become suggestible so that the structure of who you are and how you're completely in illusion about anything and how you have no idea what you really want and how you are not this body and how you should remove yourself from anything that makes you comfortable because that's your material senses. So this structure will have been implanted in your, you know, in, 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 in your setup, in your emotional setup. Um, and there's a really strange way that you can tell with people if this has happened or not. Um, even now when I listen to them talk on the internet, um, I can tell, okay, this person hasn't actually done that. They might think they're, you know. Um, no, they haven't. Um, it's really strange. Now, the next step, why I think this is so harmful, um, I kind of mentioned it already, that it removes you from anything that gives you comfort or pleasure. The main thing for me is that your, um, your emotional well-being depends on you doing the things that you emotionally stand behind so it's and, and not doing the things that hurt you and this environment makes you do the complete opposite and the more you get into it the more you immerse yourself the more you believe that you know whatever you really feel is wrong it's not true it's complete illusion um and whatever you've thought and whoever you know and they're all wrong and it's all you know sort of so you need to completely sort of remove yourself now if you don't believe that any of your decisions that you make based on what you feel are right then what are you going to base your decisions on i'm not talking daily life i'm talking you know you walk down the street you know, I'm, I'm talking very simple things. I'm looking, talking about how you deal with other people. And you, so you become, you, yeah, you, and that's why, you know, so the people are like, okay, you've joined the call, you, you've become a completely different person. This happens, this actually happens, and it happens really quickly. So, if you really believe um, that none of what you experience is right you also start believing that you're completely useless um, and you shouldn't listen to your emotions um, and you should cross these boundaries like you have boundaries things you just don't do um, but in that environment these things that you just don't do because the, they become things that you don't do because you're not surrendered enough. <laughs> you see what I mean? So your whole emotional being becomes disturbed. Your emotional sort of... Everything that protects you, you know, everything that makes you say no to stuff that hurts you, gone. You know, the more... And again, you, you, you'd think this can't happen, you know, people have a, people have a natural self-preservation mechanism. Imagine you spending five hours in the morning 
getting rid of this self-preservation. That's basically what this process does. It softens you up so much that your entire emotional setup um, gets corroded and and you become more and more suggestible to these things like you have to surrender. Of course you can do this because Krishna wants you to do this. Of course you have to go out there and do things that are really not within anywhere within your zone that you're comfortable with because the guru has said that what we do so doing that means you get the mercy from the guru and krishna again i'm you know, all this lingo is coming back to me um so you really start believing that and to my last point this stuff is all good and fine if you're in there, if you're in that organization and you work with other people, you work, it's fine. Do whatever you want. What my problem is that these, in, these, these structures that get installed in people remain when you move, remove yourself. Because you have softened your mind, you have softened yourself up, you've accepted this structure as being, as being truth in yourself you go away from because the organization obviously is terrible yes you can imagine everybody in there needs therapy that's you know so <laughs> you know plus it's completely corrupt plus um, so anyways there's tens of thousands of people that have been in there for a few years gone through this and then have left physically but all of these people have kept this structure and it's causing masses of depression and because this structure kind of serves you well in that environment it does nothing for you when you come out because whatever you look at it's all bad it's all you, you know sort of you, you think that you have left because on some level you couldn't manage you couldn't surrender so you have fallen back into the material world and you are now a demon and so um, because you're not working to remove these structures from your head you you keep believing that for years and years and years and years and years after and the more you still hang out with fringes and other sort of ex you know, and, and people have, see, you know, sort of get together where the only thing they can think of doing is have, you know, do some more of the communal singing of the Hare Krishna mantra. Which sounds hilarious, but that actually happens. And it's the only way that they can feel comfortable because they think, oh, well, at least we're doing something. You know, at least we're not all bad. But what you need to do when you remove yourself physically, what you really should be doing in order to get, regain your mental health is also work on removing those structures from your head. And um, nobody talks about that. <laughs> Every, you know, so there's lots of people talk about how the hurricanes are bad, but they mostly sort of focus on how the organization has gone off the rails because something or other, how it's been corrupted, how sort of some people believe in this part of the philosophy and not the other part and you know sort of so it's become like it's almost like the Hare Krishnas are now sort of splitting up in lots of different cults of them <laughs> their own uh, but these are my main issues and these are my uh, sort of things that I want to talk to people about and I might do some more sort of focused on little um, bits of this that I feel are important but yeah so work to understand what this means for your mental health if you haven't gone through it question you know sort of if you meet one ask them how's your how's your mental health how are you dealing with all of this stuff are you do you feel removed how do you make decisions if you if you haven't and you see one of these sort of memes like you don't have a soul, you are the soul. No, you know what? You know, I need, 
I need to talk about this stuff sometimes because obviously it's important to me because I've I've gone through this um, and I would also like more people to understand this thank you